right. Thank you for joining us. We really appreciate you spending some time with us this morning um, in advance of the NASCAR Xfinity Series race at Martinsville. Um, we will take as many questions as we can for Justin in the time that we have. If you have a question, please go ahead and raise your hand. And while we wait for questions, Justin, um, just a, maybe your thoughts heading into this weekend. Obviously, a, a big weekend when it comes to the, the playoff pitcher headed into Phoenix. Um, how is your team preparing for this weekend's event? Yeah, well, obviously the goal is to uh, get Matt Colley a championship. He uh, has put so much time and effort um, into the Xfinity Series, and, and we came up just short last year with the 11 cars. So um, I feel like AJ is in a pretty comfortable position. So um, obviously if I could get into the, to the Final Four like we did last year and, and kind of, um, you know, half of the, have half of the uh, championship field, I feel like the chances of getting Matt Colley a championship are higher. So um, looking forward to, uh, to going to battle last year, I, you know, I was seven or so points above the cutoff line going into Martinsville. So, um, a little more offense this year than, than the defense we played last year. So, um, looking forward to it and, and hoping for, for a good outcome, obviously. All right. We will now go to questions and we're going to start with Chris Estrada. Go ahead, Chris. Justin, thanks for joining us. Um, you're in that that cut line group with Justin Allgaier at plus nine. Obviously, Hamrick right above you at plus seven. Uh, you've been on a, on a really good roll of consistency, but considering how consistent those two are, um, does it feel like it, that consistency kind of cancels you guys out? And do you feel like you need to have something even bigger? Do you feel like you need to win to have a, a shot maybe overtaking both of those guys and landing a spot in the champ four? No, I mean, obviously you want to win, but – um, I think college racing and, and the 11 team do a really good job just taking uh, what the day's going to give us. Um, you know, I think we are really good at being consistent, like you mentioned, and, and just kind of clicking off laps and, and making, you know, the bad days good days and the good days great days. So um, we just can't have any mistakes. Obviously, seven below isn't impossible, but it's also um, going to be hard in, in racing Hemrick, um, who's going to be in the 11 car next year and, and Algar. Um, they're both really fast drivers and, and competitive. And then obviously you've got uh, Noah and Harrison, two excellent race car drivers that have always had pretty good success at Martinsville. So um, it's definitely not going to be an easy day, but I think we're up for the task and, and we always run pretty good at short tracks. Thank you. Okay, our next question will come from Bob Pockris. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah, Justin. I mean, obviously – a lot of give and take at Martinsville and <laughs> maybe some short tempers and everything. But I'm curious, have you, do you feel like the way you've raced people this year that, uh, that you'll be, I guess, kind of treated with some, maybe some courtesy or some, you know, do you feel like you've, you, the way you've raced people hopefully will come back to help you uh, Saturday? Yeah. I mean, something you guys really don't see is that, um, I feel like the playoff drivers this year, I, I feel like we have a lot of respect for each other. Um, you know, towards the start of the race or through the middle of the race, um, you know, we normally point each other by if we're, you know, really um, faster than one one another. So I feel like the, the championship group has a lot of respect for each other. I worry about the non-playoff drivers. Um, they've been quite aggressive lately and, and – um, that's worrisome, right? Because they don't have anything to lose and we have everything to lose. So, um, you know, I think that's kind of what we're going to have to play into, but I'm, I'm not too worried about it. Um, obviously like when you get down to the last 10 laps in Martinsville, I mean, you're going to be racing hard, right? But, um, yeah, we'll just have to see. I mean, it's Martinsville and, and we're playoff racing. Okay. Our next question is going to come from Zach Albert. Go ahead, Zach. Great. Thanks, Amanda. Um, Justin, uh, you know, minus seven uh, in, in that kind of points position, um, are, do you, how much do you hope to be updated during the race on, on where you kind of stand? Because Allgaier and him are kind of right in front of you. Do you expect to get kind of periodic updates and keep apprised of, of where you are? Not, 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 I know. I don't think I'm going to get any at all. Um, and I say that because I'm, obviously I'm going to be trying our, my best and the team's going to be trying their best and, wherever we finish is going to be where we're like, we're, I'm not going to be racing any harder or, or what. I mean, if we were like in a position where we were last year, where we we're 10 points above the cutoff line, then obviously you can get those updates and, and you don't have to race as hard, you know, mentally. But 
I think for us, it's just go all day and, and whatever happens, happens. Obviously, we can't control what Hemrick or Algar or Gregson or, or Harrison do. So um, for, for me personally, it, it, it's not worried about that, right? I'm just going to go out there and, and try to win the race and, and do the best we can. And if we don't win, then we're just going to end up where we end up. And I can't control a lot of the other things. Gotcha. Thank you. Okay, our next question is going to come from Nathan Solomon. Go ahead, Nathan. Hey, Justin. Thanks for your time today. Uh, you know, Austin and AJ are in, in pretty comfortable positions. That kind of leaves six guys for two spots. Uh, you're, you're kind of the only guy below the cut line who, who's in a good position to transfer on points. So how do you approach uh, Saturday knowing that there's kind of three other guys there that are really in must-win situations? Well, I mean, just like I've been saying the whole time, I mean, I, I feel like I just raced a race. I don't think it's any – different race and and I feel like the 11 teams really good at that I feel like we always um deliver what the day is going to give us and and maybe a little bit more on occasion so um it, you know I I feel like a lot of the other drivers they kind of get a mindset in the playoffs where they have to win or have to go out there and do something spectacular and you honestly don't I mean you you just have to kind of survive and um I mean you have to run well but you don't have to do anything crazy so like I said, the object is to win a race, but I don't feel like I need to win the race. So um, we're just going to go out there and we're starting up front, which Hemrick and Algar aren't. Um, hopefully get a few stage points on them and, and work that angle. Another thing that we're going to be looking at all day is me and Hemrick are actually side by side on pit road. Um, we lost our pit selection this week. So um, the two guys on the cut line were literally like right next to each other in the boxes. So that's going to play a little bit of factor all day. Um, but I feel like we both have respect for each other. And obviously the, the, the pits at, at, um, Martinsville can be tight. So, um, that might be my biggest challenge all day. And, uh, Saturday's your hundredth Xfinity series race. And obviously after this season, you're moving up to full-time cup. So I guess when you kind of look back at your time in, in the Xfinity series, can you say that it's been, you've had a successful Xfinity series, uh, uh career to this point? Yeah, I mean, I, I thought it was good. Um, you know, when I came into college racing, we kind of grew the organization to, to where it is now. And, and I feel like, um, you know, when I came to college racing, they had one top five as an organization. I thought that was so crazy uh, when I entered in 2019. And obviously now um, finishing outside the top five is is not the normal for us. So I feel like we've gone in a great direction with the organization. Matt and Chris Rice have done an excellent job of giving us resources. AJ and, and um Ross and Jeb and Austin Dillon drove a few races. Everyone that's kind of helped build this program to where it is um, has been good. So, yeah, I, I feel like it's been awesome. And, and I'll be right there um, on Saturdays helping and all I can do uh, to help continue to grow the program, the cup program going towards the future. Thanks. Okay, our next question will come from Aaron. Go ahead, Aaron. Hey, Justin, uh, you kind of addressed this when you talked about last season versus this season. Obviously, you'd rather be above the cut line, but I'm wondering if there's something liberating about knowing that you don't really have to clutter your mind with how the other guys are doing. You're just going to kind of do what you've always been trained to do and run as well as you can. Yeah, I, you know, obviously you, you want to be above the cut line, right? And you, But then you're worrying all day about what other people are doing and you're getting fed a lot more information. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm like, we're just going to go out there and, and do what we do. I feel like um, the, the points battle is, is a separate situation from the race, right? So, um, honestly, as, as the laps click down, I'm, I'm sure they'll tell me where I'm at, but I'm, I'm not going to want that information, right? So, um, you know, I hope it's close, and I, I, hope it's, I hope it's a clean battle towards the end, right? I hope it plays out naturally, and, and if we don't have the speed, then we don't have the speed, and, and if we do, then we do, so – um, the, the only thing I really can ask for as a driver is that, um, I've been given the opportunity, which I have, and we've had a great season. I mean, I missed a race at Dover. We, we haven't had the best season. It's been up and down, but we've been consistent and we've put ourselves in a position to, to have an opportunity as a championship. And, and as a driver, that's all you really can ask for. And Friesen was on before you, you know, I know it's a different series, but he was talking about how important stage points are for him uh, because of how crazy Martinsville can get in the second half of the race. Do you kind of view it the same way that, hey, in normal circumstances where space stage points would be a secondary consideration, I really have to go get those this time? No, it's stage points are everything. I mean, it's it's 100% um, going to be the make or break, I think. And, and if I go back 
you know, three weeks ago to the Roval, Hemrick won a stage, the second stage, and I finished second in that stage. And, and if you would have just flipped us around, you know, I would be two points below the cutoff line instead of um, the seven I am right now. So um, there's a lot of, you know, races where you can go back and think about, um, you know, where you've, where you've lost it and gained it. So um, good stage points are, are going to be big. And, and, I'm, and I'm proud of the, the run we had at Kansas. We didn't have a great day, but we made it an okay day. And, and we got good finishes. Me and AJ are going to start up front. And um, I think that's going to help us get those stage points. Thanks, man. Good luck. Okay, our next question is going up. Let's see. Bob, Brent. Bob, do you have a question or are you good? I'm good. You're good? Okay, awesome. Well, that appears. All right, Nathan, do you have an additional question? No, Bob, good. All good? Okay, perfect. Well, Justin, thanks again for joining us. We really appreciate it, and we wish you the best of luck this weekend. Yeah, thank you, guys. Have a good one.